Okay guys, welcome aboard Southern Estate here. And today I am going to show you how to change a rake core. I think it's important that every boater out there, and I don't care you know, if you are the have the most expensive boat or the least expensive boat, you should know how to change a rake core by yourself. And I've also had a request a few times to show you guys how to change rake core. So I'm gonna change my clothes and then we'll get started, thanks. Uh, so I've uh, changed clothes here and I've dug out all the oil uh, fuel filters for this uh, change today. And I want to go over these rake cores real quick. So when you buy your boat, uh, it doesn't matter what boat it is, what brand, what engine, uh, they're probably going to run some of these rake cores. And there's basically three sizes to these rake cores. My particular boat runs the big one and the small one. There's a medium one that's about half the size of this filter right here, and you've got to figure that out. Also, the next thing you have to figure out is how many micron filter you want to run. And the lower the micron, the cleaner the fuel coming out of the other end. So these are 10 micron filters. That's what I run in this uh, boat. And it's about a 40 year old trawler with, you know, if the tanks in it are about 13 years old, but still I run a 10 micron. Um, also on these filters right here, and these are my main fuel filters that go into the engine, they're two microns. So I take it from 10 microns down to two microns. So that's something important that you'll have to figure out. Now I'll share the link with you because it's much better to buy these in bulk before you ever leave on America's Great Loop or any boating trip to have these with you because you can pay anywhere from about uh, 15 bucks a piece for this particular filter right here to uh, well over uh, $25 just for this filter right here and you don't have to do that if you, if you don't want to. Anyway, so today we're going to uh, go into the engine room here and I'm going to show you on this one right here because this one's so easy to change. It's super, super easy to change. But let's open the package up real quick and we'll go over it and I'll show you what comes in that package. So inside the package here you'll have a filter and you know that this is the top of the filter right here because it has its little handles. Same thing with these big guys, it truly doesn't change. And then I have this gasket right here, which that's the top of uh, the gasket, and we'll show you when I replace that right there, and then this little O-ring right there. And that's basically what I'll change when I go to change this filter for the generator. So anybody that watches the channel, you know that I lost my generator on the last anchorage, and the reason is is because this got plugged up. And you can see how small this is compared to this filter right here. So obviously it doesn't even matter that these are both 10 micron filters, but because this little guy is so small, look, it doesn't take much to plug it up because there's no surface area there. This filter would take four times as long, basically, than this little filter right here. So that's what we're up against. But anyway, I just want to start the season, this is what I'm going to consider my season starting, with all brand new fuel filters. And then I'll really start to concentrate, I'll write down the hours of the generator and then let you know, because we're going to do a full service on the generator. And the reason I'm changing these fuel filters first is because my generator doesn't even run, so I need it running in order to heat the oil up to change the oil in the generator. So I'm going to start out with uh, servicing uh, my fuel filters first, all of my fuel filters. And that's what I'm going to, a uh, project I'm going to knock out today. Stairs and grab some diesel fuel because we're going to need that to change out these filters. It's important to keep a, 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 you know, a cherry can of diesel on your boat just for these reasons. If I didn't have that fuel on here, uh, I would have to find fuel somewhere. And especially if I get stuck on the water, it's important. So I always keep a five gallon cherry uh, can full of diesel fuel because on my two big ray cores, it actually takes about almost, not quite a gallon, about three quarters of a gallon to prime each one of those filters. The little one that we're gonna to do today on the generator, man, it only takes like a, a little less than a quart or a little over a quart actually. So anyway, let's go get some diesel fuel and let's get started. All right guys, so I keep a, a five gallon cherry can and a one gallon cherry can. This is the, the guy that I'll use down in the engine room uh, for my diesel. Also, I wear gloves and you can get a good quality glove. I carry two different gloves on this boat, uh, but these are a seven mil glove. I pick them up at Harbor Freight. Also, my gas can here, I have to have a big gas can and a small gas can because this is much easier to work in the engine room. And then these pads right here, I would suggest I don't buy these pads one or two at a time. I buy them by the case and it's a little bit cheaper, about a hundred bucks for the case of them. And that, so about a dollar a pad, but these absorb fuel and oil. So these are what you want when you're, uh, anytime that you're messing with fuel or oil, you want one of these underneath. 
Okay guys, so this is the filter we're gonna change right here. That's the Raycor we're gonna change today. A couple things I have in place. That is my uh, one gallon can full of fuel, ready to prime it. I have my bucket here. This is to pour any fuel that I don't need, so I'll set the filter in here, let it drain out, and then we keep this as a, for old oil and uh, fuel um, on the boat right here. So you should have one of these buckets on the boat. This one actually has a pump on here too because it pumps out the transmissions and we put all the fluid right into here. Other things I have ready in place, you can see I have my pad up underneath there. I've got my bucket right here because I'll drain the fuel uh, filter in into here before I get started and that'll get any moisture or anything, any sediment in the bottom of the, of the, the bowl right there. I also have a trash can ready. Um, and this will be where I put the old filter once I get through draining all the fluid and everything out of it Okay guys, so I'm just gonna kind of walk you through this right here So right here I'm gonna drain the fluid out of the ray core right here and you can see me I put put the bucket in there and I'm bringing it back out now This little guy doesn't take much, but a bigger one you're gonna need more now I'm gonna pull the lid off right now um, of, of the ray core and then after I remove the lid Let's see right here so there's the lid coming off. Then I'll come up here and change out the gasket. And there's there's two little gaskets. You saw that in the beginning of the video. So we'll go ahead and change those out. That's the little O-ring that goes on the top of the pin. And then there are the main gasket around uh, around the cap. So those will have to be a change and you'll have to do that yourself. And I just use a little screwdriver and you just pry it right out. Um, pulling the old filter out here. Let me get caught up with you here in a second. So now I'm down here and we're going to pull the fuel filter out. And sometimes you take a little screwdriver right there. You see it in my hand and I just pop it and there's little handles on there and you just grab it. And then I put it right there in that towel. And then I put the new filter right back in there. I didn't show that on here, but it's actually, I, I've already done it. I put the new filter right back in there. Now I'm getting ready to put the cap back on and then we'll call this good right here. Now I did cheat a little bit and uh, all I did was turn my fuel back on and it was able to prime the system that way instead of adding. Okay, so we're full and I'm gonna go ahead and put this cap back on. You see the fuel and, and it did leak a little fuel out. And that's why you put those rags down there. And you just tighten that down. So I keep a trash can with me uh, so that I can throw these pads away um, as, I get, as I get done and it keeps it out of the bilge. Okay, so I put a fresh pad underneath the filter there so we can see if we have any leaks and we'll go ahead and start the generator up. Now this generator is a self-priming generator so I really don't have to do anything but make sure that that ray core is full before I try and fire the generator. All right, so now that we've changed the ray core, we're just gonna uh, go ahead and uh, start the generator. Oh, it didn't fire the first time, but let's hold on here. We'll start it again. It's been a while and it's, this is a self priming generator and I lost prime in it. So it'll take a second for it uh, to kick on. There you go. So the generator's up and running. We'll go out here and check to make sure we've got uh, water coming out of the, um, the exhaust and we should all be good. Okay guys, leave your comments down below if you have any questions at all. I get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, now again, this is Ford Lehman's here and that was my generator. That's, that's what I have in this thing. So whatever engines you have, pretty much all of them run Raycors. I don't think I've ever seen a boat, uh, especially a diesel trawler that doesn't have Raycor filters in it. So, and I just think it's something you should know how to do. Anyway, I gotta get back to work in here and uh, I'm changing the oil in the generator today. I'm changing the fluids and all the gears. I'm doing a complete fluid change, getting it ready for the whole season. Anyway, peace out. Thanks for watching. Remember, live life with no regret. If you got any questions at all, man, leave that comment down below. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks, bye.